Welcome back to Home Ice with David Quinn. I'm Michelle Jingris. And ever since Mika Zibanejad joined the Rangers as a 23-year-old in 2016, he's been on a steady ascent to NHL stardom. Coach Quinn takes a closer look today at the sometimes breathtaking skill set of his number one center. Inside the Rangers film room, orchestrated by Lenovo and CDW, people who get it. Now you're going to see here why Mika's turned himself in one of the elite centers in the National Hockey League. We've talked about his all-around play, and you can see his support here in the defensive zone. One of the things you see about Mika is that he doesn't waste a lot of energy, and we do a real good job pressuring pucks, which never makes a good read. Mika reads off him, gets out, blocks a shot. He's got a great stick, and his patented move off a breakaway. It seems like it's impossible for those goalies to stop it. In a Marantic, he scores! His forechecking ability. Kreider does a good job getting in as F1. Mika makes a great read. He's got a great stick, causes a turnover, and Capo gets a shot on goal and creates a scoring chance. So, again, one of the things that Mika does in so many areas is that he gets to people quickly without wasting a lot of energy. Here he is in the transition D. Does a great job coming back into our end. Puck goes to the corner. Puck changes sides. He supports the net front. Smitty does a good job getting on his man. Mika holds the net front here. He doesn't go chasing a guy behind the net. There's great communication between Lindgren and Mika. Meeker allows Lindgren to come. Mika now gets out into his responsibility. Washington gets real high. Great job by Smitty with Ovechkin. And this is where Mika's at his best. He does a real good job supporting his teammates. Jumps on Ovechkin, and away we go. If you're going to talk about Mika, everybody wants to talk about the five goals he scored against the Capitals, and he did it in so many different ways. You know, one of the things Mika does a really good job of, he takes a lot of ice without really moving. But he's really smart in finding open space. He beats Dylan. Great play by Capo taking the shot. And we make it 5-4 with a minute and 42 to go. Unfortunately, with Washington, I think they led the league in six on five goals. They end up tying it late. And then the, the best one of them all, the overtime goal, the fifth one of the night, that patented move we see on breakaways, and a huge, huge win against Washington, one of the best teams in the league. And I think the celebration says it all about how our team felt, not only about the win, but about Mika's incredible performance. Back now with Steve Aliquet and Rangers coach David Quinn. And Mika's dynamic skill set, obviously, on full display there, coaching those five goals, as you just showcased for us. And now we're lucky enough to actually have Mika joining us from Sweden. Mika, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. We talked about that five goal game. We've actually talked about it a lot on the show. Um, you're the third player in Rangers history to net five goals and only the second one in NHL history to do it in overtime. So different people remember different things from that night. What do you remember most about it and what do you take from it moving forward? Um, I honestly don't remember too much about it. Um, the, the most I remember is just watching the, the clips from it. And obviously I get tagged on social media and uh, people saying they're watching that game again and whatnot. But um, I mean, everything went in. I feel like uh, that's one of those nights where you, know, you have a few nights when you don't score and you feel like you, you should have scored five. And then you have a few nights when you don't know how you scored five in, in this uh, in this case. But um, it was a crazy, crazy game back and forth. And, and um, it was a, definitely a good feeling afterwards. Coach, I know that uh, we've talked about this return to play and, and phase two and then eventually hopefully phase three as well. So how excited are you uh, at the prospect of having Mika back on the ice? Very excited. Uh, obviously, that was a special night for all of us. And the thing I remember most about that night was the timing of all his goals, especially the last three. You know, he scores the goal to start the third, the very first shift to start the third period. And then he scores with a minute 40 to go to put us up 5-4. And then they tie it. And then obviously the overtime goal. So... I mean, obviously, you know, Mika's season has been well documented. He had a fabulous year. It was unfortunate he missed those 13 games, but, uh, you know, he's obviously a huge, huge piece of the puzzle here and, and, and a driving force in our success, especially throughout the playoffs. So, yeah. Mika, you've had some downtime uh, while you've been in Sweden. What have you been keeping busy with? And I guess what everyone probably wants to know that's watching is when is the album dropping? <laughs> Um, it hasn't been uh, hasn't been planned uh, uh, yet, but um, no, I've been I've been trying to keep myself kind of busy um, with all different kind of sports, really. Um, with the um, with the skating being a little bit more limited than usual, but um, it's been a lot of badminton, a lot of paddle tennis, and, and um, 
regular tennis and just basically anything I can do. I played soccer with my girlfriend and, and uh, just trying to move, move every day and, and just make sure that we're, uh, that I'm ready uh, whenever this thing's uh, get started. Yeah, Mika, I know what it feels like to have nights like that where everything went in. <laughs> this, one's, uh, this one's for Quinny. Uh, Quinny, what has impressed you most about Mika, just seeing him grow over the last two years? Well, he and I have actually talked about this, you know, uh, you know, his growth away from the rink. And, you know, he's always been a talented player. He's always been one of the best players, uh, you know, whatever level he's been at. But there is an adjustment to pro hockey. And to watch him grow uh, away from the rink and, you know, take on the responsibilities as a leader for us in so many ways. He's a great example for our younger players on what it's going to take to have success at this level. Um, and really just – you know, he's really turned into a, a three-zone player and an elite three-zone player. And, um, you know, I've said this a lot about him and Artemi and most and all of our guys, really. I mean, we're very fortunate to have not only great players, but great people. And I think when you have, uh, you know, great players and they're great people, uh, you get a much better chance to have success. Mika, just along those same lines, we've obviously seen you take huge strides forward on the ice this year. But tell us a little bit more just about what Coach was alluding to, your growth off the ice. What do you attribute that to? I think uh, as, as, uh, um, as we, we've been speaking about over the last two years, I think the, the, the off ice and, and uh, living as a hockey player um, doesn't mean that you have to think hockey or watch hockey or you don't have to work out 24 hours. But I think everything you do, you have – some sort of thought about making sure you're in a good spot. And, uh, you know, it took a, quite some time for me to figure out that part. I mean, I, I felt the growth on the ice step by step by, by each year, really. But I think it's off the ice and getting the support from, from my trainer back home to my family, to, to, uh, to my friends and my girlfriend, every, everything like that. I think that, that, really, uh, that really helps when you have that support. And obviously when you um, – when you do that and you you see results from it, you get more confident. And and uh, I think the you know um, the whole situation of you know um, since since um, Quinny came in, I think playing more and, and getting a bigger responsibility, I think that that kind of puts you up to it as well. That you 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 have to do a little bit more. And and I think that's uh, that's what's been pushing me to to uh, to get this to get to this level. But I'm I'm not happy yet. Just quickly to follow up on that, you talk about, you know, learning uh, to push yourself to do a little bit more, how this stuff kind of, it takes time sometimes. So get your support system to get everything together. Do you now feel like as somewhat of a veteran on this team, that's kind of a, the same kind of advice that you would give to some of these younger players that maybe are, are in similar situations to what you're, you've been in in the past? Yeah, and I, and I think I've been getting advice and I've been getting, you know, help from older players and stuff I think it's it, I think it's important to be able to listen but also go through the things I mean go through the first I don't know the f five to six years or whatever it is before getting to this point I think you I went through a lot and ultimately it was basically you know on me and I think I had to figure that out to go through that uh, to to really appreciate and to understand how how important this is and now it's you know now it's nothing I have to think about. It's more of a of a, a habit, and I think that's uh, something I can't really live without, or you know, think about not doing. It's just it just happens, and I think that's uh, I'm I'm happy to come come that far. Mika, over the last two years, ten of your goals have been scored with Chris Kreider in front, screening the goalie. And just want to know what that means to you, him signing that extension. One thing uh, I really admire in your game is how you celebrate after those goals are scored. I love the fact you point to him and you're saying thank you in the celebration. It's really good for the team culture. Yeah, I mean, Crides has been a huge part for this team for, for a long time. And, and uh, uh, you know, big help when I got here. He was, he was my first line mate um, when I got to my first Rangers camp. And, uh, really been playing together for for those four years, and and uh, a little bit on and off with some injuries here and there, and uh, some shakes up and shake up in the, the lineup. But um, he means he means incredibly much to to this um, to this team, and and um, obviously when you know he 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 does the dirty work as well. Um, 
everyone knows he's fast. He he has a great shot, but he uh, he does the dirty work. And, and uh, I mean, I don't know if he loves standing in front of the net, and I don't think I would. But at the same time, he he uh, he does it. And I mean, we um, he helps the team that way. So um, it's uh, big ups to. I talked to Mark Siaccio last year at one point. We were on the ice together, and we were talking about you just being able to finish the way that you do. To me, it seems like you're in, at impossible angles sometimes, and you just seamlessly get the puck high over the goalie. And, and sometimes you even choke down to do it. Is it something that you changed with your lie, length of stick, or your curve that maybe you could share with uh, our viewers because there's a lot of kids watching, and they'd probably like some tips. Uh, I think I've been the, the, the worst nightmare when it comes to sticks for Cass. Um, with, with switching sticks every year, I think three times during a season, just trying to find that comfort in the stick. Um, I think it's important. I think it's important where, where you don't feel like you have to put your hands in a certain way when you shoot or in a certain situation. I think uh, I found a stick that I like now. Who knows? I might change it next year. Um, but I think choking down a stick is more just uh, for me to to make sure I don't miss the puck. That's really the secret of it. Um, I feel more comfortable with that, especially in tight, um, and that helps with the lie as well. I, I get my whole blade on the ice, and, and uh, um, I don't know, just uh, a lot of experience for mini sticks, I guess. <laughs> hey, well, Mika, don't feel bad about being high maintenance. My nickname was high maintenance backup goalie. So, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you for uh, that. <laughs> Mika, just to, just to wrap this up, it's a 24 team tournament going forward. Your coach's message on this show has been, why not us? So how does that sound to you? I mean, speaking to my friends and, and family and, and people that, you know, ask me about this whole thing and what are our chances and everything. I, you know, I've been saying the same thing. Um, you've seen, especially, when a situation like this happens, no one's been a part of it ever before. And um, you, you've seen it at the start of seasons, teams go hot and you have a hot goalie. Why not? And, and um, you know, we just got to approach it game by game and, and uh, trying to hit the run, uh, hit the ground running. All right. Mika, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to having you back stateside, hopefully a little bit sooner than later. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. When we come back, it's your chance to get your questions answered as we head to Twitter when Home Ice with David Quinn returns.